and it comes. That is why. So through our baptism, we heard that through our baptism, baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life and the gateway of the spirit, gateway to life in the spirit and the door which gives access to all other sacraments. Now, in our baptism, although we have received the baptism, Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 8, he says, All powers of heaven and earth is given to me. Therefore you go and baptize, proclaim, make disciple, baptize them. What is the next word Jesus said? What is the next thing Jesus said? Baptize them and teach them what I commanded you. Teach them to obey what I commanded you. See, this is important. Receiving baptism alone will not make us powerful. He says, baptize them and teach them. So, through teaching, a divine wisdom, a divine wisdom is released in us. Then only we will realize what is the power of baptism. Then only we will realize what are the effects of the grace of baptism. You know, grace. Sacraments, what is the definition of sacraments? Sacraments are the visible sign of the invisible grace. And what is the definition of grace? Grace means participation of divine nature into human nature. Participation of God's life into our life. So our life is mixed and merged with the life of God and made our life one. That is human and divine. We become one. Maybe that is the way we say this sign. This is the sign of man and God together. So through baptism, when we receive the grace into our life, or through grace, God's life is integrated with our life. And then, after that, we must be led by God's spirit, by God's grace, God's power, God's word, God's holiness, God's wisdom, God's love. But at this time, if we don't recognize this, we still continue to let by our own will, our own life, our own love, our own wisdom, our own understanding. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's why many people say, Oh, I am a Christian from generations, but oh, what a life. I am not happy. I am not happy. I am not happy if anybody says I am not happy, that means that person has not experienced the baptism or that person has not even understood what is the baptism. So through baptism, what is happening? The working of grace, the different working of grace. In the Catechism, paragraph 1263, 1263 says different working of the grace of the baptism, different working. One of the important aspects of the working of the grace is that it disconnects us from all the sins of the generations. Baptism, by baptism, all sins are forgiven. Original sins, all personal sins, as well as all punishment for sins. In those who have been reborn, nothing remains that would impair their entry into the kingdom of God. Neither Adam's sin, nor personal sin, nor the consequence of the sin. My dear friends, we often think that our ancestors have done so many bad things and we are, we are suffering because of our ancestors. No, that is wrong. All the sins of our ancestors are disconnected through our baptism. That's why St. Paul and in all the teachings says, that once you are baptized, you are a new creation. You are a new creation. Every, all the old things pass away. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, The one who is in Christ is a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. 
So, whoever is in Christ, that means whoever is baptized and experienced the baptism, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. So we have to believe through our baptism, all the old things have passed away. It's interesting to see even in the first chapter of New Testament. The New Testament begins with the chapter Matthew's, Matthew's Gospel chapter 1. How is it beginning? The beginning with the ancestry of Jesus Christ. The family tree of Jesus Christ. And we can see so many bad things in the family tree of Jesus Christ. Judah had children in his, uh, in his daughter in law. And David, David slept with Bethsaba. And Solomon was a child from Bethsaba, the wife of Uriah. And Solomon had thousand wives. All these things are in the family tree of Jesus. Why? Why all these things are mentioned in the gospel? Why New Testament begins with the family tree of Jesus? The reason is, if and even if all those families had all those problems, but in the family of Nazareth, in Joseph and Mary, none of these things are transmitted. My dear friend, that is the newness of life, what God wants to give to us. In the family tree of Jesus, we see terrible things, terrible things. But in the family of Nazareth, in Joseph and Mary, none of those things are transmitted. God wants to give us such a newness. God wants to disconnect all the generation problems, all the genealogical problems. So through baptism, ah, yes, yes, in, in Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, when Peter was speaking about this, in his preaching, it is mentioned, get away. From these corrupt generations. See, he testified with many other arguments and was exhorting to them. Acts of Apostles chapter 240. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting to them. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Corrupt generation. We may, our past generation may be corrupt. But once we are baptized, we are completely freed from that generation and we become a totally new creation. And that's what in the genealogy of Jesus Christ we see. The genealogy of Jesus Christ, the, the family of Jesus Christ, the father and or Joseph and Mary had nothing connecting with the old generation. So my dear friends, through baptism, one of the main grace and working of the baptism, the working of the Pentecost, working of the Holy Spirit in us is that we become a new creation. All the sins are removed and we become a new creation. And also we become an adopted son of God and we become a partaker of the divine nature and we become a member and a co hire with him and the temple of Holy Spirit. And also, the most holy trinity gives the baptized sanctifying grace, justifying grace. And finally, it's written, the whole organism of Christian supernatural life has its roots in baptism. The whole organism of the supernatural life of a Christian. My dear friends, let us pray, recognize in our baptism, we already have experienced the Pentecostal experience. We already experienced the death and resurrection of Christ. O oh, Holy Spirit, O oh, Most Holy Trinity dwelling in us, stir my baptism. Release the wisdom and power. Release the grace of my baptism. Disconnect me from all influence, negative influence of my past generation. Whatever might have happened in my past generation. Now when I believe that through my baptism it is all disconnect. 
Yes, I receive it. I become new. O Holy Spirit, sanctify me from all the negative influence of my family tree, from my past generation, and, and make me a new creation. Help me to stir the baptismal fountain in me. Help me to experience the everlasting grace of my baptism. O Holy Spirit, I thank you for this grace. I thank you for this abundance of life. I thank you for the newness of life. O oh, Holy Spirit, in this Pentecost, help me to renew. Help me to renew. O oh, Holy Spirit, renew me. Take over my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit.